Hello everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to play the keyboard starting from scratch so that you can play something recognisable in less than 10 minutes. If you're up for that, let's dive straight in. The point is, <laughs> you wouldn't try and play the piano underwater, so why make life more difficult for yourself than it really needs to be? Let me show you what I mean. Now I have dried off, let us get stuck in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the keyboard. The way we're going to approach this is um, very much like playing the guitar. We're going to use guitar, we're going to use chords and chord shapes, and you can learn some basic chords in a few minutes, and that will allow you to start experimenting and accompanying yourself and playing songs and things like that. Then there's lots of stuff we go on to do later, and that'll be great, and I'll give you a little outline of that later on. But let's start um, introducing you to my keyboard, complete with flashing lights. Right, um, this note here is called middle C. You can find it because you see there's this repeating pattern of two black, three black, two black, three black. Everywhere you see two blacks, the white note just to the left of it is an A C because there's several different C's across the keyboard. That's C, that's C, that's C, that's C, that's C, okay? What you're gonna do is put your thumb the thumb of destiny on middle C. It's called middle C because it's in the middle of the keyboard. Okay. Thumb on middle C. Skip that note. Third finger on that one. Skip the next note. Little finger on that one. So you're playing one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. Okay. Lock your little hand in that position or your big hand in that position. Okay. Once you've got it locked in position, you can move it, move the thumb up and play different key, uh, different chords. Look. All these chords have different names, but also they have a number. That is called one. Uh, this is called two. This is called three. This is called four. This is called five, six, seven, and back to the beginning. Okay. Now we're going to play what is called a chord progression. Uh, this is where we start getting into being able to accompany yourself um, singing songs. So start with this one. Um, so you're locking your hand in position, you're putting your thumb on middle C. Now see if you can find this note. So if you're looking for the, th the way you find this one, it's note five called G, it's one, one, two, three, four, five, um, is to look for the three black notes and it's the sort of left of the two white ones, okay? So that one there. So we start on C, we then go to there, we then go up one, and we go down two. Let's do it again slowly. Start on middle C, take the whole chord down to that chord there. Now move it up one note, and now move it down two. This is the world's most common chord progression for all kinds of songs. If you find yourself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to you. Hello. There's loads and loads and loads of songs. And if you want to know all the songs you can now play, <laughs> not all of them, but um, there we've made a little downloadable um, cheat sheet which gives you all the details of what I'm explaining here, plus uh, a list of about 100 songs which use this chord progression. So you can now sit down and impress your friends by quietly accompanying yourself as you sing everything from the Beatles to Lady Gaga to um, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Or, well, you know, everybody's used this chord progression. Right, so we've now got the chord progression down. Okay. So far, so good. Let me introduce you to my bass finger. This is the bass finger. Taking the bass finger, we're also we're going to find the next C down. So there's the two black notes. There's C. Got it? Play that one, then play the chord. 
Then take the bass finger down to chord five, that one there, and let the chord, the hand follow. Go up one, down two, Practice that a few times. It's actually easier playing bass finger chord rather than trying to do them both at once. Because if you do them both at once, you have to work out, you have to look in two places at the same time. I am a bear of little brain. Actually being able to play two things at the same time is quite hard. Uh, so, so it's actually when you're starting, it's easy because you, you look where you're going. Here you go, here you go. See, okay. Right. If you want to smooth it out and you're feeling ambitious, and you have one of these things, it's called a sustain pedal. And what you have to do is you push it down and if you push it down while you're holding the note down and take your hands off, as long as you've got the pedal down, the note continues to sound. So you can go. And it smooths it over and joins them up. with the sustain pedal if you've got one and see if that um, makes your life any easier or more interesting or whatever but look the point is you can now go out there and start playing songs and um, where this is going to lead to let me just give you an idea where this is going to lead to as we move forward with this or as you move forward with this um, you'll start to do bump into some other interesting things like you don't always have to have a simple uh, three chord three note triad like this all the notes don't have to be in the same you can change what's called the voicing so we can have one and five there and three there that's the same chord just spread out in a different way that's pretty cool we like that the next thing it was are things called inversions where you don't always put the same note of the chord at the bottom then we're going to introduce things like suspensions and inversions then we're going to introduce more interesting chords. And then you can start moving around um, with into different keys. you're in control because you are just looking at chords and you're learning the notes which go to make up the chords and that sort of liberates you to start playing in a more interesting way and before you know it you'll be having a real laugh and if you then want to go on and um, learn you know the other way of, of learning to play piano using scales and um, there's a lot to be said for scales and five finger exercises and all this sort of thing because there is a lot of technique to, to when you get going if your technique isn't quite right you will eventually hit the buffers so there will come a point once you're really enthusiastic about this and you've got a lot of, of back from playing with you know all these chords you may say actually i'd quite learned to, like to learn you know all the kind of all the, all the sort of scales and five finger exercises reading music and then if you know if you really stick at it you'll be able to stick up a piece of music and play a Beethoven sonata, but equally you can put, pick up a chord book and just, or you can make up your own music. Isn't it great? It's just such fun. And it all starts with. Start there and enter an amazing and wonderful world of keyboard and piano music. Good luck to you.